my primary question is, will Justin Trudeau survive the summer? The next three months. Now, his father decided to step down in 1984 on February 29th. That was 40 years ago. Yeah, it was indeed. It was a leap year. It was February 29th. He took a walk in the blizzard and decided he was going to step down as prime minister after all those, those years, almost 16 years as prime minister. Will Justin Trudeau take the summer months to think about his future? He clearly cannot win again. And he's delusional to think he can win. <laughs> he's delusional to think the Liberal Party deserves to win. But, you know, I was watching a, a segment of Redacted the other day, and the segment was focused on how we are so close to a nuclear war. We're on the brink of a nuclear war, and this will be beyond catastrophic. It could be life-ending for all of us, to the, to the extent that I think we don't really believe it's going to happen, or it can happen. It's just unthinkable. It's unbelievable. But it can happen. Yes, and I've talked about this for the last year, how nuclear war is a feasible option because of what NATO is demanding. And you start a war with Russia, it's no small matter. It will very quickly evolve into a nuclear confrontation and a nuclear war. And that's going to happen if NATO does not get out of its delusion. And that's exactly what the guest was talking about with Clayton Morris. There is a delusion amongst world leaders right now. Joe Biden thinks he's not demented. Joe Biden thinks he can win another election. The Democrats might force him out because he can't win the next election. Justin Trudeau thinks he can win another election. Stephen Gilbo thinks he can sit there and tell you not to drive your, your gas-powered vehicle, not to heat your home in the winter, and not to use the air conditioner in the summer, because you are the problem, not him, not this guy who flies to China every September to hobnob with his communist comrades, not Justin Trudeau who flies around the world on his private jet costing taxpayers $223,000 for meals alone. These people are delusional. And the liberal government is delusional to think all they have to do is say eight out of 10 Canadians receive more back from the carbon rebate than they do from the, being subject to the carbon tax. It's a lie. We all know it's a lie. The parliamentary budget officer has said it's a lie. Ending. The government release the real cost of the carbon tax after the parliamentary budget officer revealed that there was a report the government had been covering up and had gagged him from releasing about the actual cost to Canadians. Now, because common sense conservatives brought forward this motion before the committee, before the House, because of our relentless questioning and the pressure that is weighing heavily on li uh, Liberal MPs, the government has finally relented and released part of the information. It had to be pulled out like a rotten tooth, <laughs> Madam Speaker, and rotten it is, $20 billion per year in lost GDP as a result of the carbon tax. The Liberals own documents say it's a lie. But Trudeau keeps repeating it. Natural Resources Minister Jonathan Wilkinson repeats it every time he stands up. We actually validate the fact that 8 out of 10 Canadians get more money back. Stephen Gilbo repeats it every time he stands up. 8 out of 10 households in Canada are better off with the application of carbon pricing. Christia Freeland, the Finance Minister, she repeats it. Returns more money to eight out of 10 Canadians. It is a talking point. It, it's from a script that is completely unbalanced and untrue. But it's because this is a delusional government. You might recall 
The Bible talks about, and this is not a religious broadcast, but I can't resist saying this. The Bible talks about, in Second Thessalonians about the end times being a period of where God sends strong delusion because people did not believe the truth. And that's exactly what we are participating in and what we're experiencing right now. Strong delusion from politicians around the world. Politicians who think Canadians are going to just suck it up. We're just going to keep taking this authoritarian government. We're going to keep taking this climate change mantra. We're going to keep taking euthanasia. We're going to keep taking economic disaster. We're going to accept a government that takes two-thirds of our capital gains. And Trudeau keeps saying, oh, it's only going to affect the very wealthy or the wealthiest Canadians. And it's just a little bit. It's two-thirds. That's theft. And it's like being taxed twice. Capital gains is like being taxed twice. You're being taxed on income you already paid tax on. So stop saying it's only hurting or affecting the super rich. It's affecting everybody. And people have been telling me that all week. Hey, I'm a plumber. I'm an electrician. I'm a welder. I make pretty good money. I have money to invest. This liberal government's taking my money away. I don't consider myself the super rich. But I tell you, I can't afford to live on 60000 a year like Christia Freeland thinks everybody's living on give them a choice oh we said stop this be on the stupid side of a narrative or a, welder, a canadian who lives from paycheck to paycheck so those are my concerns i will continue to broadcast six to seven days a week throughout the summer i'll continue to work for you and report the news that you need to know i want to thank you for being a solid supporter of stand on guard and the Cradens right network we're here because other people aren't. And I'm, I have really enjoyed being with you. It's my birthday today, by the way, June 21st. It's my birthday. And I wanted to spend some time with you, my supporters, my subscribers, the people who make this station what it is. Thank you for your support. And I'll be back again tomorrow with more news. And hopefully some good news. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this episode of Stand on Guard and being a part of the Creighton's Right channel. If you've watched this episode to this point, you've watched it all. And that's really important for a small station like this. We always say subscribe, hit the bell, be a part of the Creighton resistance. Resolve to resist. That's what we're doing. And if you become a subscriber, if you're a supporter of this station or a member through Substack, through YouTube, and now you can be a local as well, that's so important to us because I couldn't do this without you. I made a decision to become an independent journalist about a year ago because I wanted to bring all of my experience in the military, in journalism to you. I don't promise anything I can't deliver. I don't offer clickbait, I offer truth. The truth is out there. And it's my job to bring that truth to light and to you. Thanks for being a part of the Creighton's Right Resistance and we'll see you again soon. So we are in a very precarious position in this country. We need a political change, but we also need the resolve to resist 